hyperinflation happens? The logic is very simple. Too much money chasing the same amount of goods and services or too less goods and services in the economy. As denoted in the circle, the supply of money exceeds or more than the output in the economy. Hence, with printing more and more money, it is able to generate excessive output to stabilize the demand for the product and services, it's fine. A dollar digit, that's why it's the world reserve currency. After printing so much of money, they're able to sustain their economy from hyperinflation. They deserve to become the world reserve currency. Think about one day you wake up and you found one million dollar lying next to you. For many of the people, that would be the happiest day in their life because money is their top priority. However, if the same thing happened with everybody in the town, then there is no worth for the free money you've just received. Everybody can reach and everybody can demand for the goods they were not able to buy or demand earlier because of lack of resources, definitely lack of money. Hence, without increase in the output in the economy, the price of the goods and services will go up and too much money is chasing the same goods leading to hyperinflation. All the examples that we discussed, like talk about Germany, talk about Zimbabwe and Venezuela, all happen due to printing of excessive money without increasing the corresponding assets. We will also discuss about the features of the money. But let's discuss something through the help of the example. Too much money chasing few goods. On the left hand side, please look at the chart. On the left hand side, there are a lot of dollars, lots of dollars chasing very few apples. There are only five apples and there are a lot of money in the economy. Ultimately, this will lead to increase in the prices of the apple and we have discussed so much about money we are talking about money we are talking about chasing too much money 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 printing money let's understand some of the characteristics of money because in order to understand hyperinflation we have to understand what an inflation is we understood and in order to understand hyperinflation further we need to understand the concept of money the characteristics of money. So I tried to explain the three main characteristics of money. The first one is the storage of value, unit of account and medium of exchange. Let's understand all of these in detail. Let's understand first the storage of value. It's only a piece of paper written something on it, signature by a particular person named governor. Unless and until it would be capable of storing some value for me. Think about the dollar, think about the green buck as we call it, is able to store four apples which means if I have a dollar in my pocket I would be able to buy four apples which indirectly means that a dollar is able to store four apples within it. And that's what we call storage of value. If I have a piece of paper and I'm able to get something out of the piece of paper, the paper has a value that stores value for me. In this case, where the value is for apples. The second case is a unit of account and medium of exchange. Let's discuss these two up together. What do we mean by unit of account? If someone is able to provide a service, we are able to quantify the service in value terms and compare it across other services. Think about a plumber services and we mention it, it's $2 which says that the plumber service is worth of two dollars and when someone is providing you services in return you need to pay them back it's the same concept of quid pro quo and if they require a particular service that you do not have then in such a case you won't be able to take benefit of the particular resource think about this course I'm teaching you in hyperinflation and in return if I go ahead and ask for a bushel of rice and you do not have bushel of rice you won't be able to take this course and I will definitely lose a brilliant student like you. 
Hence, there has to be a medium through which goods and services can be exchanged and it's done through money. It's a medium of exchange. It prevents the system of barter because barter has a limitation. If someone do not have something, they won't be able to rejoice the service, rejoice the goods. And money stores value for them. It provides a unit of account how much a service is worth and which correspondingly leads to a medium of exchange. All of these three characteristics line together. They can't be understood on an isolation. They have to be worked together to consider the wealth or the worth of a money. It's and if any of these characteristics are broken, if any of these characteristics are not met, then that would lead to disaster name hyperinflation. Think about uh, the examples that we discussed. It was not able to store value for the holder. Think about the depreciation. It depreciated like anything without any worth. Without any worth. It was not able to store unit of account. It was not a medium of exchange because many people are not using the currency of that particular economy as a medium of exchange because they don't trust that particular currency. They broke the rule of the features of money and hyperinflation as the reward.